Uh, this time we're going to ask everyone to have cell phones, to put your cell phones on silent or on vibrate, that you won't be disturbed from hearing the word of the Lord. So without any further ado, we're glad and pleased to bring before you the messenger of the Almighty God, our pastor and apostle, Pastor Gino Jennings. Thank you, brothers and sisters. You may be seated. Greetings, brothers and sisters. All right, we are thankful to the one God. Good? For blessing. Too good. For blessing us to be here this afternoon. We are thanking God for his divine wisdom and his perfect understanding of all things. We are grateful to him for the prophets and the apostles. We're glad for all of you that are here, to all of our ministers and our guests. God has been good to all of us. Ninety souls were baptized last night. In the name of Jesus Christ. <coughs> it's the Lord's doing, isn't it? We're glad for this temporary location for Houston and <laughs> boy, we don't have no room, do we? But uh, we're grateful. I was looking for one of my brothers from Atlanta who's supposed to have been here, but nevertheless, we want to kind of go over some things with you to give you an idea how some things we do in reference to service. You know, prayer in churches is somewhat obsolete now. You don't have much prayer in church other than some fellow who poses as a preacher and use words that's too large that you need a dictionary to understand them. But we normally open up service with everyone on their knees in prayer. We encourage all the people to get back to that old landmark, should I say. Get on your knees and pray for one hour. I believe Jesus told his apostles to watch with them or wait with them one hour. Now, I know some people ain't used to praying an hour. Some ain't used to praying 15 minutes. But we're living in a time now where prayer needs to be back in church and in your home. So even though services start at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, it starts with prayer. In fact, we tell people, even when you come to church early, come in not sitting around talking, Get on your knees and talk to God. If your knees bother you, well, do like on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says where they were sitting. But the condition of the world, the way it's in now, everybody needs to be more prayerful. So we are instituting that, we have instituted that in every location. Because many of us, all of us came from some type of church or religious background. Some, no religious background at all. But in most cases, churches that used to be prayerful have ceased. They never slowed down taking your money. In fact, they have came up with more methods to speed up that pace. But we want our young people and middle-aged people and old to be a prayerful people. If you want to combat the devil, you got to have some form of defense. One of the greatest forms of defense is having a prayerful life. Not having a prayerful life sometimes will lead you into things that you may would avoid 
having a prayer for life may help you overcome things that you could not avoid. So when you come, and next Sunday, we'll have one of the ministers here. Now, as I said last night, you don't want to be the type of brother or sister that say, well, I ain't coming to church unless Pastor Jennings is here. Imagine if I said, I ain't coming to church unless you're here. <laughs> and you know, most of you is not nowhere where I am because I'm traveling all over the place. But I am not your Lord. I am not your God. God sent me to you to call your attention to his will and to his purpose. And I say like the Apostle Paul, this will I do if God permit. So we want you to be faithful, Houston. As I said, we will be flying back and forth as time permit. And a lot of time our arrival will be unannounced. We'll just come in and see if all these people still are going to be here who really say they want to be saved. Because if you really want to be saved, you're going to stay with God whether I'm here or not. Are you listening? <clears throat> now I want to dive into the Bible, but before I dive into particular scripture, I want to straighten out a question that a brother asked me. Mm. Give me that scripture where the Bible says he preached to those spirits that was in prison. And also, for this cause, what the gospel preached to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to men in the flesh and live according to God in the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right, follow me in your Bible. Let me answer this quickly, and then I'll tie Houston Hills down. That's right. First All Peter, right, follow me. First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, and we're starting in verse 18. All right. For Christ also hath once suffered for sin. Now, the atonement for the world, the sacrifice for the world, the offering for the world was the death of the Son of God, the Son of Man, Christ Jesus. That's right. For the Spirit offered up that body once for all through the eternal Spirit. Mm -hmm. The body of the Son of God was the Son of Man, also it was called the Lamb of God. Lamb means sacrifice. The Lamb of God was the sacrifice of God or the offering of God, offered up for the world to be saved. Listen. For Christ also hath once suffered for us. Yes. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins. Christ once hath suffered for sins. The just. The just. For the unjust. Doing what? That he might bring us to God. How? Being put to death <coughs> in the flesh. Now hold it right there. I want everybody to hear me real good. The Pentecostals and the Apostolics said, God died. Mm. God died. Right. God ain't never died. No. You can't kill the creator. That's right. Somebody said, well, Jesus Christ is God. Jesus died. That's right. But mm -hmm. God didn't die. That's right. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? God was the spirit that was in Christ Jesus. That's right. The body of flesh and blood, that was the Son of God. That's right. <clears throat> the body of flesh and blood, which was God's Son, just like the body, the church, that's God's Son, and God is in that church. That's right. If you kill the members of the church, you haven't killed God. No. You just killed some members of the body of God. That's right. Are you getting me? That's right. The Son of God represented the church. It was many members, but one body. It had eyes, ears, <coughs> hands, mouth, many members. One body. Now, God was in that body. That's right. So when Jesus died, 
God didn't die. Mm -hmm. Son of God died. That's right. Then the inner man came out of the outer man, which was the body of Christ, and went to the lower parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. Some preaching had to be done right. to the dead world. That's right. <clears throat> now, the reason why his fleshy temple couldn't preach to them that died because the dead know of nothing. Right. I want you to get this. I want to break it down for you. The dead know of nothing, talking about the flesh of the dead, but the spirit is aware. Right. And when he went to the lower parts of the earth, he didn't preach to the flesh. That's right. He preached to the spirits. That's right. That was in prison. That he might bring us to God. Give chapter and verse again. First Peter chapter 3 and we're still at verse 18. That he may bring us to God. Being put to death in the flesh. How? Put to death in the flesh. How did he come back? But quickened by the spirit. Uh -huh. By which also. <coughs> Listen he, at this. By which also. By which also. He went. He went. And preached unto the spirits in prison. He went and preached to the spirits where? Uh, he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. It ain't talking about a federal prison. No. <laughs> talking about the grave. That's right. The Bible says death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression was made in the figure of him that was to come from mm -hmm. the time of Adam's death. All the way up to the one that died when Jesus walked earth. Right. Many of the fleshy bodies went to dust, but the spirits was in prison. That's right. In order for the spirits to be set free, you had to have one who was the first begotten of the dead. That's right. And the first one to be the begotten of the dead was Jesus. For the dead to be liberated, he had to rise from the dead first. That's right. That's why no one that died could rise before Jesus and remain living. That's right. Nobody. Nobody. So Jesus, when he died and then rose, notice the Bible never said all the dead rose after his resurrection. No. It said some of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. Why couldn't they all rise? It ain't time yet. That's right. When all rise is when he comes for creation. Mm -hmm. But he left an example of how it would be. He rise first, they come after. That's right. He come for the church first, then we are resurrected after. That's right. Are you getting this? That's right. Glory to God. What did he say? By which also he went and preached <coughs> unto the spirits in prison, uh -huh. which sometime were disobedient, uh -huh. when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. So them that was in prison, mm -hmm. all the prophets, think of it, heard Jesus preach. That's right. They didn't hear his flesh preach. No. His flesh was laying there, wrapped in fine linen. That's right. But when he was on the cross, he yelled up the ghost. And when he yelled up the ghost, that spirit which was in him went into the lower parts of the earth, mm -hmm. the grave, and left the body still hanging on the cross. That's right. And the body was there hanging, but the spirit was in the lower parts of the earth. Why it was important for the spirit to preach? Mm. Why was it important? Because look at those that died from Adam up to the arrival yeah. of the Son of Man. That's right. That's millions. Oh, yeah. The Son of God can only be in one place at a time. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit of God can be everywhere. That's right. And because the dead was in so many places, the Spirit at one time covered all the spirit of those that died. That's right. Three days and three nights. Mm -hmm. Preaching. Preaching, preaching. Third day, spirit come back in that body, quickening it. Mm -hmm. Changing it from a natural body to a spiritual body. Right. Arising and staying around for a little bit longer and then begin to drop some more good information to his apostles. That's right. 
Then after he gave the information to his apostles, before he went away, Luke began to write something so good in Acts, the first chapter. First chapter. He said, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, have given the commandments to his apostles whom he had chosen. Let us understand something. The apostles had the gospel right. That's right. That's why we stick to everything they preach. That's right. Men write me and say, I'd rather hear Jesus they hear the apostles. You's a fool. That's a fool. I want to emphasize on it so good. Amen. You are a fool. He that heareth you. Do you hear Jesus? Do you hear the boss talking? In the book of St. Luke, chapter 10, and at verse 16. Listen at this. He that heareth you. He's telling the world. Hmm. He that hear you. Heareth. Hear, who's you? The apostles. That's right. If you hear the apostles, heareth me. You hear Jesus. That's right. He that heareth you. And if you hear the apostles, heareth me. You hear Jesus. Now I want to wake you up real good because some people are so misled. They are taught only the red letters in your Bible. <laughs> are the sayings of Jesus. Again, I say, he's a fool. That's right. Suppose your Bible don't have no red letters, then what? Mm. What did Jesus say? Everything from Genesis 1-1. That's right. To Revelation 22, last verse. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus talking. Amen. Well, how is that, Pastor Jennings? Because Jesus Christ is God and no man speak anything on his own. Mm -hmm. The Bible said all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. That's right. That means God himself, God, God. he inspired all the prophets. Hallelujah. And he inspired all the apostles. That's right. Now, hear me good. If no man spoke this, you better give me the book of Peter. Yes. No private interpretation. I, I got to lay some good groundwork here. That's right. You know, because I want to let everybody know I, I don't care how many Bible colleges you went to, mm -hmm. how many cemetery schools you go to Amen. and come out a dead graduated fool. Yes. In order to break down the scriptures, mm -hmm. it must be given to you by the same spirit that inspired the scriptures. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Listen. In the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, and we're at verse 19. All right. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. That's what gives me so much confidence in what we're preaching is right to everybody. That's right. And not sure. trying sure. to be right. It's sure. just 100% right. Amen. I know many viewers get mad and say, oh, that man is arrogant. He's self-righteous. He's beside himself. I'm not beside myself. Will's beside me. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> He's too big for the britches. My britches fit me all right. Fit you all right. But because I'm so confident and so sure. That's it. Amen. The Bible says, amen. in this will I be confident until one scripture says, surely there's no enchantment against Jacob, neither there's any divination against Israel. Mm -hmm. I'm very solid in what I believe and very firm in what I preach because I refuse to deviate at all. At all. You can't pay me to deviate. That's right. You can offer me all the money in the world. That's, that's an insult to my God-given intelligence. That's right. I say like Balaam mm -hmm. told Balak, Balak, if you fill this house with silver and gold, mm -hmm. I cannot go beyond mm -hmm. the word of the Lord to do more or to do less. That's right. So our teaching and preaching, we're not trying to stick with what the Bible said. We're mm -hmm. sticking with it. That's it. Amen. That's right. I'm determined to stick with it. I'm not trying to make friends. When you try to make friends, you're going to change to please them. Amen. I ain't going to change to please nobody. Yeah. I want you to know that in advance in case you don't come back next week. <laughs> Amen. I ain't going to change to please nobody. That's right. If I come back down here and the whole building is empty and the only ones in here is one person. That's right. I'm going to preach to that one. 
like it's 1,000. Amen. 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 You see, God taught me years ago the importance and the value of one soul. Before we had a church in the city of Fredericksburg, Virginia, we only had one member. She passed away now, Mother Betty Greenhaw, only member. It was long before I even had a car. I was on Amtrak train every month. That's right. Every month, going to Fredericksburg, Virginia, preaching to one member. That's right. Every month, I was preaching to that one member like it was 1,000. We had service in the basement of a home. She had an old wood stove. And for a podium, I used a bookcase. Sometimes I opened up praise service, unless some other brothers was there. If not, I opened up praise service, testimony service. I testified. <laughs> she testified. I would testify and tell them, thank God for our overseer, Pastor Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> And then I say, well, if there's no more testimony, let's get our offering. All of you that have an offering. <laughs> I get the offering pan and walk through the no crowd. And That's right. <laughs> Mr. Green Holler put up money in there. I put my money in there, bless the offering. Then I come back and say, all right, we're glad to have so many of you here. <laughs> yeah. I said, we're glad to have our overseer. He came all the way from Philadelphia. We're going to turn the service in the hands of our leader, Pastor Jennings. Then I go from the front and come right to the, in the back of the podium and say, all right, greetings, everybody. <laughs> for 10 years, for 10 years, I went to Fredericksburg, Virginia every month for 10 years, preaching to one mother. Amen. God taught me the value of one soul. That's right. One soul, I said. Now we have several thousands. Yeah. And I'm committed to one as if it was one million. That's right. Because when I read the Bible, even heaven get glad when one soul That's repents. Huh? That's right. Listen at this now. Second, Get chapter and verse again. Second Peter chapter 1 <coughs> and we're at verse 19. Mm -hmm. We have also a more sure <coughs> word of prophecy. Yes. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place. I want you to get this. We should do what? Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. It is a blessing to you that you take heed to the message of holiness. Amen. Who? Everybody. Everybody. Think of it. You know how many years a man will have to preach even just to have a crowd like this? That's right. And some still don't have it. That's right. This is the Lord's doing. Oh, yeah. And I advise all of our viewers around the world, take heed. Take heed. You see all these hundreds of people Every time you see a telecast standing to be baptized and auditoriums jam-packed, yeah. these are the last days. That's right. And the message of holiness is, without a shadow of a doubt, mm -hmm. the message for the last days. Amen. It's for those that want real church. Yeah. You that want to go to hell, you, don't, you ain't going to want this message. No. But this message is going to break you. Oh, yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. you, you, you get a bull that don't want to be broken. When that cowboy get on him, <laughs> that bull wants you to know you don't belong on me. That's right. And he going to hop around and get you off. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that cowboy, a body be snatching and jerking and snatching and <laughs> jerking. And, and eventually the bull throw him off. That's right. Well, that's the way the devil is when the word get on his back. That's right. A lot of times people get to jumping and jerking and fighting, rebelling against God's word. Amen. You know, holiness calls for change. And that change is difficult sometimes, isn't it? Oh, yes. 
Isn't it, I said? Amen. Oh, you can say amen better than that. <laughs> because God requires of us to do what we never done. You know, in many churches, we make a little change. A little change. A little bow face. <laughs> I mean, you put down the liquor bottle, but you still smoke your cigarettes. <laughs> you put down your cigarettes, but you still shoot dice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Put down your dice, and you still get together with your little fake Christian group and go to a club. That's right. You say it's a Christian club because all Christians are together. Hmm. No, you're a bunch of sinners with Bibles. That's all. Just hanging out at the club. That's all you are. Yeah. A bunch of sinners with a Bible. That's it. Are right, you listening to the old troublemaker? Whereunto ye do well. Going to church mm -hmm. does not qualify you to be a Christian. That's right. The only thing that make us Christ-like is teaching. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. And teaching do two things. Destroy us or save us. Oh, yeah. Anybody go to church? Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm pretty sure many of you here have been going to church for years. Mm -hmm. Some of you may have been ministers and deacons and acting deacons and missionaries and Drummers and horn players, bass players. I got any musicians in here? Raise your hand. I got any musicians. All right. Drummers. Any of you drummers? Raise your hand. Oh, wonderful. Organ players? Raise your hand. Bass players, saxophone players, trumpet players, violin players, harmonicas. Amen. <laughs> 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 well, <coughs> I came out of a false church, and uh, I was the organ player. I played organ for years, never had no lessons played by ear. Coming up, I was around all kind of music, jazz, R&B, so-called gospel, <laughs> reggae, no gay, nothing. So it sharpened my style. I played drums for about eight years before I played the keyboard, and then played keyboard for about 45 years. I was offered to be a millionaire to play for a jazz club, making $24,000 a month. That's right. Some folk don't make that a year. That's right. A month. I was offered that in high school. But because I was saved, you know, one thing I say about the Lord, he know how to take the fun out of life. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> <Yeah. coughs> Glory to God. You know, there's a brother that used to be with me. He passed on. I miss him much. He's a very, he was a very good brother. His wife is a good sister, Sister Joan. I call her Sister Earl, Earlene. But her husband, Brother Jones. Brother Jones used to break out singing his song in church every day with Jesus. Every time he sang it, I just look up and go, oh, God. <laughs> it's sweeter than the day before. So one day at the service, I said, Jones. Every time he see me here, yell, preacher. I said, Jones, why you sing that all the time? He said, isn't every day with Jesus? Sweeter than the day before with you? I said, no. <laughs> I said, brother, all this suffering I'm going through? No. Oh, he looked at me and just laughed. I said, if you can sing that, you go ahead. I said, but I can't sing that. I said, I may hum it with you. I said, but I can't sing that because, brother, when you trying to do what God say do, there's some days you wish didn't come. That's true. I believe it was Job that said, let my days be blotted out in which it was said a man child was born. That's right. Job was saying, let the days just disappear. Yeah. 
in which it was said that I came into the world. Sometimes your life gets so hectic, you desire death. That's true. But uh, you better not desire death if you ain't ready to go. That's right. I want this to be good for some of us who's overzealous. Let me say, I'll be glad when Jesus comes. Hmm. You bet, we better straighten them out, Williams. Yeah. You better get the book of Amos. Mm -hmm. How many here said that sometime? Raise your hand. Come Amen. on now. Come on, raise your hand high so I can get you. Raise high. <laughs> <laughs> I have said that many a time in ignorance. Amen. But when I learn better, I ain't saying that no more. No, no. Why? Because if you're not ready when the Lord comes, hmm. I'm glad the Lord ain't came yet. That's right. What, what, Pastor Jenny? Yes. Take your time, Lord. That's right. Take your time, I said. Amen. Why you tell God to take his time? Hmm. They give you time to get cleaned up. That's right. The longer God take, the better for you. Oh, yeah. Because we got some tough cleaning to do. Amen. Because he said he's going to present to himself a glorious church not having a spot. spot. That means God ain't going to settle for nothing but perfection. That's right. He ain't coming for Baptist people or non-denominational people or apostolic people. He speak plain. That's right. Listen and holy. Holy. Hallelujah. Holy. Is he to have part in the first resurrection? That's right. Glory take God on such a second death. Thank God have no power. Amen. And God's standard of being holy ain't like people. No. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. For us to be what God want us to be. You ever have folks sing that old song, to be like Jesus? Mm. Oh, how I long to be like him. Right. There was no flaws in him. That's right. One scripture says there was no sin in him no. at, all. at all. No darkness in him. Mm at all mm -hmm. and here we got to strive to measure up to everything that jesus said that's right and seeing that we have tough uh, such a tough job to do you ain't got time to look at nobody else no i don't waste your time to try to judge nobody else that's right just take your time and let the word of god work on you amen Huh? Amen. What did he say amos chapter 5 and at verse 18. all right this is for those that used to Try to rush up the Lord's coming. Listen at this. Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. All right. Woe unto you. Now, when the Bible says woe, that means I'm sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you. That desire the day of the Lord. Wait a minute. Mm. Woe unto you. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Why? To what end is it for you? That's my question. That's right. You still sucking cigarettes? You don't want the Lord to come for you, buddy. No. <laughs> oh, no, mm -mm. no, no. No, no, you don't. Mm -mm. Anything that God tell us not to do, mm -hmm. and I want everybody to hear me good, mm -hmm. anything that God told us not, not to do, and we're still doing it, even if we're trying to stop, but mm -hmm. we're struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want the Lord to come yet. No. We don't want the Lord to catch us with any work undone. That's right. You don't want God to catch you scratching off that lottery ticket. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the Bible said, love not the world, mm -hmm. neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. You don't want the Lord to catch you scratching off that little raffle ticket uh, you know, you buy from that. Then one thing about the, real, the, the uh, lottery, <laughs> it, 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 the devil just make it so easy for you. That's true. You go to the, you go to the supermarket and they give you a little ticket and, little ticket. and you, you got to read that thing. <laughs> Sometimes I have on there lottery. Yeah. And you scratch it off and win some pots and pans <laughs> and glasses, but you didn't read the ticket. It says lottery. Lottery. Mm-hmm. That's right. Bible says, he that gather riches and not by right dies a fool. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you know someone that stole merchandise, like a refrigerator, radio, washing machine, even if all your merchandise is broke, yeah. 
and you know it's stolen goods, mm -hmm. you can't accept it. That's right. Because if you do, you strengthen the hands evildoers. of the evildoer. Evildoers. Mm -hmm. That's right. You don't want the Lord to come for you. No. Somebody go to a high-end store and stole a bunch of clothing, then set up a stand in your neighborhood. Hmm. Suits that's about three and four and five thousand dollars. He getting rid of them for fifty dollars. Hmm. You know they hot because when you buy, you looking. <laughs> Tell them, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, man. <laughs> eh? Amen. So went to one of them high-end stores, Neiman Marcus, and got all them Gucci bags and name brand bag this, set up a stand selling those bags, five dollars. Mm. Amen. You a holy woman, you can't stop when you know. You know. Notice I say when you know. When you know it. Now, when you don't know, you're not held accountable. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's, why it's, <laughs> that's why some of us don't want people to tell us things. <laughs> See, when you want to be holy, there's a lot of what you call opportunities you're going to have to pass up. Amen. If Williams, just say if Williams' father was a big drug dealer, mm. big crack dealer, mm. and Williams knew it, but he left Williams $30 million. Mm -hmm. $30 million of pure crack money. My Lord. Hmm. Three mansions in Florida. A ranch in Dallas. Two private airplanes. Five breweries. Mm hmm. Mm. <laughs> and all of it was built by crack money. Yeah, crack money. Crack money is blood money. That's right. That's right. And ain't no need for William to come to me later and say, No, I need to talk to you. you <laughs> my father was a big crack dealer. You shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> because the moment you tell me, I'm going to unleash Bible on you. That's right. Now, many of us, when the Bible talk and we are presented with something we want to do, now we're challenged. Yeah. Your love for God and your love for sin is challenged. Amen. Oh, especially when money come involved. That's right. Some people go to hell for money. That's right. They know they're making money wrong, but because they love for it. Love That's it. why the Bible speaks plain. That's right. The love of money the is the root, the root, meaning it's the source. Of all evil. Of how much? All evil. You better read that, son. Give me the book of Timothy. First Timothy chapter 6, and we're at verse 9. Follow me, Houston. First Timothy chapter 6, and we're starting at the ninth verse. Glory to God. But they that will be rich. Uh-oh. Amen. Now, this particular scripture is not for everybody. No. It's only for rich folk. <laughs> That's right. You hear that? Oh, yeah, it's only for rich people. That's right. The Bible speaks plain. But they that will be rich. What happens? Fall into temptation. I have people write me and say, Pastor Jennings, what do you think about preachers who drive Rolls Royce and Bentleys? Mm -hmm. Well, long as the people in the church don't buy it. Right. If you got a job and that's what you want to drive, that's your business. That's right. You work and earn your money lawfully. Mm -hmm. You can drive a horse if you want. <laughs> Amen. And put some uh, rims on his hoofs. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what you want. That's right. But they that if will the, be rich. The members of the church should not, yeah, buy no preacher. Go Cars, ahead. houses, right. suit, none of that. That's right. I work. You ought to work. Mm -hmm. I see me and my wife send our children to school when they was there. Send yours to school. <laughs> I don't need the church to send my children to school. Right. If the church can afford to send mine to school, then the church can afford to send yours to school. That's right. I'm an independent working preacher. That's right. That's why we can care you like we can. <laughs> Amen. What is that? But they that will be rich. They that will be rich. Fall into temptation. Wait a minute. What happened to rich folk? Fall into temptation. What happened to rich folk? Fall into temptation. Uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of people. Yeah. Was saved, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. 
had the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, seeking the Lord, mm -hmm. until money came in their life. That's right. They was faithful offering givers and tithe payers and every type of building project for the work of God. They contribute to it. But my Lord, <laughs> all of a sudden, they came in contact with some money. Yeah. They don't hardly come to church now. Mm -hmm. They arrived by the church. That's right. Now they think they got too good for God. That's right. <clears throat> like these multi-millionaire mega preachers. Mm -hmm. They don't preach this kind of preaching. No, no way. Because they're not going to preach nothing that's going to hurt your wallet. That's right. My job as a messenger of God is to prepare you to meet God, not prepare you to get rich. Amen. You want to get rich and learn how to make money? Go to college. You want to get saved? Come here. That's right. That's what I'm talking. That's right. What is true prosperity? It is not your house. No. It is not your car. It is not your wardrobe. Mm -hmm. True prosperity is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of who God is. That's right. I don't care how rich. I know rich people. Yeah. I know rich people. I know millionaires. Some of them watch the telecast. NBA players come to First Church. Uh, NFL players come by the church. Soccer players come by the church. Uh, baseball players come by the church. Some of them came and got baptized. Amen. That don't impress me. <laughs> no. I don't care who you are. That's right. Amen. Once in a while, uh, me and Bernard Hawk, uh, me and Bernard Hopkins. Once in a while, uh, time go by, we will get a chance to talk. He, one of the former, I believe, middle or uh, heavyweight boxers. Yeah. His wife and him loved the program. Amen. Watch it. Glory to God. He said, you know what? He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, but my God, Pastor Jennings, you tell it like it is. Yeah. He said, I love it when you throw that hook. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm not impressed with nobody in the world. No. This is the way I look at creation. When a rich man die and a poor man die, neither one of you have God. Now here's a rich man, he's buried maybe in a vault, big as this room. Poor man, he's buried, throws in a pit. But neither one have God. Who's better than the other? Nobody. That's right. The Bible said, how do the wise man die? Just as the fool. Listen at this in the book of Amos. Back in Amos chapter 5 and at verse 10. What is it? Or at verse 18. And Amos 5 verse 18. That's what? What were to you that desire the day of the Lord? To what end is it for <coughs> you? What you going to get out of it, Houston? Mm -hmm. What end? Houston, cigar suckers, pipe suckers, vape suckers. Yeah. <laughs> homosexuals. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. I know I got some Texas longhorn homosexuals down here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What you going to get out the coming of the Lord? What end is it for you? What, what end is it for you? You that got your second wives and second husbands. That's right. When the Lord comes and you standing at that altar mm. or signing those divorce papers and the Lord appears. What end is it for you? What end is it for you? You white bigot and you black bigot. Right. What is your end That's when right. the Lord appear? That's right. When you're yelling white power, you white folk ain't got no power. Amen. You black folk ain't got none either. That's right. The only power that be is that which is ordained of God. Amen. Eh? Amen. The Bible said, let every soul right. be subject to the highest power. That's right. That's the thing I want to bring to you, That's the it. power in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Come on, son. What wants you that desire the day of the Lord? Uh -huh. to, to what end is it for you? When the Lord come, you shaking your hips at your Texas club. What end? What end is it for you? Same club that many of you used to go to, and the same club that some of you was just at Friday night. <laughs> Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. You heard I was coming in town, and you want to get your last dance on. <laughs> eh? That's right. You want to get your last dance on. Yes, yeah. and they're shaking your hips and your fake hair and a shift to the left and 
that fella's too paid and win another way and his, mouth, his, his, his half eyebrows arched and her fake eyelashes dangling you like a fool. That's right. You only got the breath in your nostrils, Miss Woman. Amen. You thank you God's gift to every man out here. Mr. Man, you thank you every gift to every woman out here. Both of you are a living fool. You only got the breath in your nostrils. That's right. When God snatched the breath out of your body, your body would drop dead on that dance floor. Go ahead. And God is going to call you in judgment. That's right. Yeah. Woe unto you. Hallelujah. Woe unto you. That desire the day of the Lord. That desire. The day of the Lord. That day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? What you going to get out of it. Amen. That's something to think of, isn't it? Oh, yeah. What you going to get out of it? You better go back to where we were, son. Mm -hmm. Back at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 10. Follow me. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and at verse 10. All right. Or at verse 9. All right. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And to many what? And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. It's not a sin to be rich. Mm -hmm. That's if God make you rich. It was God that made Solomon rich. That's right. The sin is when the riches have you. That's right. I wish I was a rich so I can set up churches like you're planting corn. <laughs> Every city I go to, I wouldn't leave without setting up a church. That's right. I don't like renting. Amen. Folks that own the property, we may make them upset with the gospel. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they say, well, you can't come in here no more. <laughs> then I'm going to have to have church outside of your place. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Block the door. <laughs> Amen. I don't have men that own facilities and said we can use their facilities to baptize. Mm -hmm. And then they got mad at us for what we stood for. Yeah. Lock the doors of the church. Yeah. Lock the doors of the building. Mm -hmm. That's why I prefer having our own. Yeah. We can stay in there all night if we want to and preach the gospel. Amen. Don't care if nobody don't like it. That's right. They that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. So some of us may pray that Pray that God would make us rich. Some of us pray that prayer, but can you handle the wealth? Yeah. Let's look at the little bit of money you have now. See, can you handle that? Right. See, do you get beside yourself when you get in your car and shine it up? <laughs> See how long you stand in the window and look at the thing? Yeah. All you did was shine it and buff it and detail it. Yeah. See, can you walk by your window without? <laughs> Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. See, are you that materialistic? Amen. Amen. See, do the material things of life take you over? Yeah. Until it got, that's what happened to churches. Yep. Materialism. <clears throat> Materialism has became the message in the forefront mm -hmm. of practically all churches. Amen. These dumb preachers trying to convince us that your heaven is right here. This ain't no heaven. No way. If my heaven is just a car, a house, a suit of clothing, ain't no heaven. No. There got to be something better than this life. They that trust in their wealth. Do you hear what David says? In the book of Psalms 49 and at verse 6. Psalms 49 and 6 says. They that trust in their wealth. They that trust in their wealth. And boast themselves. And brag. In the multitude of their riches. And the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother. Do you hear this? Amen. Sometime as two brothers love each other, blood brothers, two sisters, yeah. very close family, oh, yeah. until somebody, one of the parents died. That's right. Mother died, father died, now everybody fighting over a house. That's right. Won't even speak to each other now over a car. Give chapter and verse for gets again. Psalms 49 and we're at verse 6. Argue over a car. Argue over a house. Argue over a bank account. Yeah. The bank account only have $100 in it. <laughs> Two brothers won't speak. Two sisters won't speak. That's true. Two twins won't speak. That's right. Argue over land. Amen. I want everybody in the world to understand Amen. the whole earth is going to pass away. Yeah. And everything in, it, everything in it, your bank account, out of all the work God is blessing us to do all around the world, building churches, buying buildings, converting them into churches, and everything. everything. 
where God going to burn everything up. That's right. Your house, your bank account, your clothing, yeah. your car, burn it in your brain. Nigga, you came here. Amen. That's the way you going out. That's right. And there's no need for you to get caught up in anything in this life other than God himself. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? They that trust in their wealth. The Bible says, choose ye this, this day. day. This day. Whom you going to serve? Yeah. If God be God, serve him. serve him. If Baal or the devil be God, serve him. Serve him. You choose Houston. Mm -hmm. You choose between your boyfriend and God. That's right. Choose between your girlfriend and God. Mm -hmm. Choose between that job where you're making six and seven and eight figures a year and God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us was doing pretty good until that money, as I said, came in our life. Money. We rolled our salvation right out the window. That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say here? They that trust in their they wealth. They that trust in their wealth. And boast themselves in the <laughs> multitude of their riches. <laughs> None of them can by any means redeem his brother, uh -huh. nor give to God a ransom for him. Wait a minute. They can't give God a ransom for him? Nor give to God a ransom for One him. One thing about your money, it can't get you out the grave. No. Amen. When I came up, I remember in the 70s, I was in a barbershop reading Jet Magazine, <laughs> waiting for my time for my father to cut my hair. And there was, I remember when a Cadillac Seville came out. There was a fellow that died, and they took a casket and customized it to look like the Cadillac Seville, white wall tires and everything. Had a steering wheel in the coffin. Had him with a three-piece suit on, a broken-down brim, gloves, propped up in the casket oh. with his hands on the steering wheel. Oh. There ain't no driving in the grave. No. If everybody realized yeah. your date of arrival, you did not know. That's true. And your date of departure, don't you know. don't know. Don't know. So between you being born and between you leaving here, what plans are you making to meet your Lord? Amen. Let's look at the life they're living. You're partying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Many of you partying, many of you gambling, many of you got a bar in your house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got your Jack with Daniels. <laughs> got your whiskey. Yeah. Took a few drinks last night and you're here today. True. Some of you going to go back home and take a few more drinks and come back tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. What are you doing to making plans to meet God? You ain't going to live forever and ever right here. No. Like the lion Jehovah Witnesses told you. That's right. Heaven and earth, yeah, and earth ain't going to burn up. <laughs> if I got any Jehovah Witness here, I'd take the word of God and burn you up this afternoon with it. That's right. I mean, I'd make you lick up every lie you ever told. That's right. This earth, this earth will not stay here. But the day of the Lord will come. Do you hear the Bible talking? In 2 Peter chapter 3 and at verse 10. Keep going to people's doors with your comic book interrupting their breakfast. Amen. When you see the Jehovah Witness knock on your door, give them the George Jefferson treatment. Just slam it. <laughs> You're going to knock on my door and tell me there is no hell? My Lord. You mean to tell me you're going to interrupt me? Listen, if there was no hell, I would not be in Houston. No. Did you hear what I said? That's right. I said, I said, <laughs> if there was no hell, I wouldn't be in Houston. No, no. Preach to who? Amen. Preach for what? For what? That's right. My God, man, I found me a place. And where you going, Gino? There's no hell. Because if there's no hell, there's no consequences. That's right. And if there's no consequences, you're free. Free. To do whatever you want, and you never have to pay a price. That's right. Am I right, I said? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God says what? But, the, of Peter. but, but the day of the Lord. Give chapter and verse. Second Peter chapter 3 and we're at verse 10. The day of the Lord. Will come. It's coming. You can be as hard head young man hanging on the street with your pants hanging down showing your drawers like a bum. <laughs> That's right. A real man don't advertise his drawers. No. A real man don't advertise his behind. That's right. If you're a real man, why are you trying so hard to get other men to look at your behind? <laughs> Amen. Am I right, I Amen. Amen. A real man don't do that. That's right. The day of the Lord will come. Hallelujah to God. Amen. It will come. As a thief in the <laughs> night. No thief. Call somebody and say, hey, you, uh, this the Brown residence? Yeah, look, I'm three doors down from you. I'll be coming in your window by 8.30. If you hear some noise, don't worry about it. It's just me robbing you out of everything. A That's thief true. don't do that. No. A thief breaking your house if you were in the shower. That's right. He catches you off guard. That's right. Think of it. The day of the Lord is like a thief that comes. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody is prepared for the arrival of a thief. No. So imagine when the Lord come my Lord, my Lord. and you just lit a match to light your cigarette. Mm. And the Lord said, cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. Yeah. Imagine when the Lord come and you, brother, have just decided to be a homosexual. My Lord. Amen. You just put on your male thong like a loose fool. <laughs> Amen. And here when the Lord appear up in the heavens, all that noise outside, you don't know what's going on and you run into your window. What is that? What, what, what is that? And then when he run outside, there's God. Oh, his voice going to change. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Slapped him right back to his manhood. <laughs> right back, I said. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Woman, I don't care how cute you think you are. Listen, I don't care if you got more curves than Route 85, 95, 495, Route 1, all the hills in Texas. Amen. When you die, the worm's going to cover your corpse like anybody else. That's right. You can walk the street with your hot pants and wear out hair half naked, yeah. but you're going to meet your God. Oh, yeah. And when God snatched the breath out of your body and you end up in the morgue and that Undertaker cut your body open oh. and remove your organ and sew you back up, your time have expired. That's right. And the only thing that you can show God when you was living is tattoos all over your body, a bunch of babies by every neighborhood oh. dog that walked the street, and you never gave God a drop of time. That's right. Talk back to me. That's right. What the Holy Ghost said. But the day of the Lord the will. Day of, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. The day of the Lord. Will come. It's coming, I said. That's right. Will come. Uh, you only got a little bit time to be cute. You only got a little bit time to be handsome. You only got a little bit time to party and Amen. gamble and act like a fool. Know the way it was in Noah's day. That's right. They didn't pay no one no mind. Oh, no. But even though they didn't pay no one no mind, they didn't stop the rain from coming. That's right. You know, I, I wish it was a way that God can take me back. I would love to see the facial expressions mm. upon the people oh. after God closed the door of the ark. That's right. And then the rain was bursting from heaven. Oh, yeah. And all the rivers and streams and lakes and everything begin to just rise up. Can you imagine the people hammering and banging on the ark, pleading with Noah? That's right. The ark represent the church. Yeah. The flood was the judgment of God. Mm -hmm. It is written as it was in Noah's day. Yeah. So shall it be when the Son of Man, Man comes. Come. Our young brothers and sisters are dying 
seem like quicker than the old folk. That's right. Mothers and fathers are getting tired walking their children to the cemetery burying them. Yeah. It should be the children burying fathers and mothers, but it is parents. Because daughters are too hard headed to listen. Right. Sons is too self righteous and stubborn to listen. Yeah. You want to be in the bloods. Yeah. You want to be in the crypts. You want to be a gangster disciple. You want to walk around and drive by and shoot somebody's yeah. daughter, shoot somebody's mother, shoot somebody's father, gang bang and carjack, and then end up in jail and turn to a whore. That's right. Talk back to me. That's right. Amen. This is why they say he don't preach with love. You call it what you want. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? That's right. What is it? But the day of the Lord will come. The day of the Lord will do what? Will come. It's coming. It's coming. It will come. And I'm traveling around the world with God's help, sick and well. That's true. Trying to wake people up. That's right. Houston, I'm glad that you woke up. Yeah. Amen. And God willing, like I said last night, God be our helper. We're going to get on down in Dallas. Wake Dallas up. Amen. <coughs> I also want to get in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. Wake San Antonio, Texas up. Yeah. I would like to get in Galveston, Texas. Wake them up down there. In other words, I want the whole state of Texas. That's right. Because the entire state is going to stand before God. That's right. Eh? Amen. Everybody Amen. going to stand before God. That's right. Amen. You're going to find that your color won't impress God mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to get the shock of your life. Oh, your yeah. money won't impress God. That's your right. looks won't impress God. Mm -hmm. Your status in this earth will not impress God. Mm -hmm. Who's more richer than him? That's right. Who's more higher than him? Yeah. Who is more important than him? Yeah. Who is greater than him? Amen. When we come to the reality that we are nothing but dust, yes. and we have a creator to answer to, whether we believe it or not, right. whether we stubborn or humble, whether we are obedient or disobedient, that don't change nothing. No. It doesn't change the reality. Everybody will stand before God. That's right. What did he say, son? But the day of the Lord will come, will come as a thief in the night. What happened? In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Uh -huh. The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. What's going to happen to the earth? The earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. We might as well enjoy our house while we got it. Yeah. Drive your car while you have it. That's right. Because when the Lord gets through, he's going to burn it up. Burn it up. Amen. I was looking at the news. I was supposed to go to Malawi and Mozambique to the churches down there. God done changed all that plan. Mm. God sent a cyclone down there about two weeks ago and practically demolished Malawi. Lord. And demolished Mozambique. My Lord. Waters and boulders. I've seen boulders that waters done pushed I don't know how many tons Houses just washed away, killed I don't know how many people. Mm. Whether you're rich or poor, bond or free, yeah. no rich person got enough money where they can buy life. That's right. That's why I'm pleading with the rich. You need God. Oh, yeah. No, no, maybe so about it. You need God. You don't need Scientology. You no. need God. Charge them that are rich. Do you hear what the Bible told me to do in, in 2 Timothy? In the book of 1 Timothy, First chapter Timothy, 6. 1 Timothy, chapter 6. And at verse 17. God says, charge them. That are rich in this world. That are rich where? In this world. That are rich where? In this world. God told me to charge you that charge. are rich in this world how not to be. That they be not high-minded. Don't be so arrogant. Amen. Don't be so high-minded. That's right. Don't be so self-willed. That's right. Don't be so self-righteous. Yeah. Don't be so devilish proud. Charge them. Huh? Charge them. Charge them. That are rich in this world. Come on, you can go on now and get your makeup sprayed on you. Put the graffiti on your face. That's right. Huh? That's right. When I came up there, put makeup on, they put a little bit there, but now they got a sprayer. Yeah. 
You know, like you spray. It. You know, like you like you paint a car. Amen. Yeah, man, they spray it on now. <laughs> spray it on. Put all that graffiti on your face. What's wrong with the way God made you, sister? That's right. What's wrong with the skin God gave you? Mm. What's wrong with the eyebrows and the lips God gave you and the eyelashes? Yeah. Why you need horse hair to replace your eyelashes? Amen. Why you need skunk hair to replace the hair God gave you? Grandma, mm. grandma. I said grandma. <laughs> That's right. Here you 85 years old. Hair is beautiful white and silver. Yeah. But you cover that beautiful silver hair up and put on an Indian wig. <laughs> and here your hair now got a jet black Indian wig with silver eyebrows. That's right. 87 years old with a mini skirt on. My Lord. Ankle chain. Mm. Red fingernails and red toenails. Yeah. The mothers should be teaching these young women. That's right. And you young women that want to make babies, but yet you don't want to be a mother to the babies that you made. That's right. That's right. And the young men mm. who just want to go from state to state getting women pregnant. Yeah. You better listen to what I'm telling you. That's right. Oh, you're going to stand before God. Listen, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. the books was, I saw the dead. That's right. Small and great. Great stand. Stand before God. Let's read this quickly. In the book of Revelation chapter 20 and at verse 12. All right. And I saw the dead small and great. I told you, even when you die, you're not going to get away from God. No. Think of it. And this is one God that death, when your death hits you, you still haven't got away from him. That's right. You're going to lay there in that pot, that box, or in that pit, or mm. in that pile of dirt, wherever you dead at. Even if your body is cremated, God going to bring your ashes back. That's right. Cremation, Hallelujah. you won't get away from it. That's right. You can set your body on fire, Go ahead, turn it into ashes, dump your ashes in the sea, and let the fish eat your ashes, and the fish that ate your ashes, let them die. Yeah. But when God come, he gonna make the fish come back, vomit your ashes up, your ashes gonna come right back together so that man and woman can stand before God. That's right. Yeah. I saw the day. I saw the day. Small and great. <laughs> Small and great. Stand before God. You think you ain't gonna stand before God? Amen. You think you're not? Mm. Well, Pastor Jennings, that's not my religion. Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> that's right. Who cares? I saw the dead. I saw the dead. Small and great. Pastor Jenny, we don't believe that in our church. Who cares? <laughs> That's right. Listen, your church may not believe that speeding will get you a ticket. Amen. <laughs> you be like a fool and go on down there and break the speed limit. Break. But when that cop pull you over and uh, ask you for your license and registration, it may be a woman. Mm -hmm. Ask you for your license and registration. You may hate women. <laughs> and you may tell her, I ain't got to give you it. Sir, would you please give me your license and registration, please, sir? You ain't no cop, you're a woman, sir. I'm not going to ask you again, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, once you find yourself in handcuffs, <laughs> and Miss Officer, who you reject, is reading you your right, she's telling you, you have a right to remain silent. You can keep telling her, you ain't no officer, but you're in that paddy wagon. <laughs> That's right. But you know you only got a short time to party. Oh, yeah. And dance and shake your hips. Amen. And flaunt yourself out here in the street. Yeah. The streets of America, my God, is like a bloodbath now. That's true. There's nothing but a bloodbath. Our young people are killing each other. Even the young girls are just as much in gangs as young boys. That's right. You see our young girls today as a disgrace of every nationality out there fighting each other fighting like each other. wild fools. And some, instead of people breaking it up, they sit there and videotape it. That's true. Videotape it, then laugh. Amen. Laugh, put you up on YouTube. Yeah. And you think it's funny because you look like a fool. That's true. Embarrassing yourself, making mockery and cussing out elderly people. Preach it, man, man, when I came up and we was on a bus and the old woman and the old man get on, we got up. 
we got up, gave them our seat. Today, my God, I see these young girls' mouths are just as filthy as boys. Old woman, uh, be walking. They'll cuss her out. Don't even know her. Make mockery of her. Children, throw things at her. Yeah. Old men. And the parents, when you chastise their children, the parents want to kill you. <laughs> Amen. The parents themselves don't want to correct their children. Yeah. And they don't want you to correct them. The Bible is a book of correction. Oh, yes. Anybody that don't want to be corrected from God, mm. you don't want to be right with God. That's right. If you want to serve God, you're not going to do it without correction. That's right. What did he say? And I saw the dead small and great. I saw the dead small and great. Stand before God. Uh-oh. Small mm. and great. Small. Small. Not known. Unpopular. That's right. Great. Maybe great. a king. President. Mm. Governor. Queen, mayor, yeah. stand rich, before God. Poor, black, white, bond free. Yeah. Oh, you're going to stand before God. Just That's imagine right. all these different generations standing before God, looking yeah. like they were in the era that they were living in. That's right. Great wealthy men, yeah. dictators, dictators, kings, mm. going to stand before the king of kings. That's right. Lord of Lords. Amen. All the presidents of America mm. going to stand before God for all the decisions that they made. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I saw the dead small and great. Small and great. Stand before God. And what, what, what did the great bookkeeper do? And the books were open. God got books on you. That's right. The books were open. God got books. So God is keeping a record on everybody. That's right. Yeah, and the God, books. I say, yeah. I say, God, God is keeping record, glory to God, on everybody. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the books were open. <clears throat> you can turn your lights out to your room, look like a billion midnights. Yeah. But God says darkness and light is equal to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the books were open. Uh -huh. And another book was open. What is it? Which is the book of life. And, and the dead were judged out of those things. I told you. Amen. You dead men and dead women, you coming back. Oh, yeah. The dead was judged out of those things that were what? Which were written in the books. That were written in the books. According to their works. Uh oh. All right, now let's have a rap session, Houston. Mm -hmm. The Bible says. And. Read it, son. And the dead were judged out of those things. The dead was judged out of those things which were written, that were written in the book. In the book. According, according to their works. All right. Let us look at our works. Works. Be it right or wrong, yeah. they're documented as we speak. That's right. Even if others don't know what you've done, mm. the bookkeeper knows. That's the right. The bookkeeper. The great bookkeeper. Now. The things that God had written down about you. Mm. Would you want anybody else to know? Huh. <laughs> My Lord. Let me ask it again because it was so weak in here. <laughs> <laughs> the th <No>. the th <laughs> <laughs> because God knows all things, does he not? Amen. Things that God have record of you. And I want all of you that are watching around the world to get this. God is a bookkeeper. Right. And all his documentations, there are no slip-ups. Mm. He don't get nobody mixed up with nobody else. My Lord, my Lord. Now, please. Not just what you do physically is documented. It's what you think. That's right. Mm. The Bible says the very thought of foolishness is sin. Yeah. Not only is what you do with your body is recorded, yeah. not only is what you think recorded, but what you intend to do that you haven't done. That's right. For the Bible says he know the intents of the heart. Of the heart. Haven't done it yet, mm -mm. but you're making preparations. That's right. Order in the court. Go ahead. 
The Holy Ghost said and the, he know the intent. That's right. Of he God. know my uprising. Yeah. My downsetting. downsetting. He know my thoughts are far uh, off. off. What, 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 what you mean? What you mean? There's thoughts that you have at 30 that you didn't have when you were 15. That's right. So the thoughts that were afar off that you didn't know yet. Mm. He already know them. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me. Wait a minute. What's the first word? Oh, Lord. No, the first word. Oh. Amen. Huh? Oh. Oh, he, I, I someone groaning in prayer. That's right. Give chapter and verse. Psalms 139, we're starting at verse 1. Oh, Lord. Thou hast searched me. Now, there's one thing that I never said. And a lot of preachers make the statement, God is trying to get your attention. Don't ever say that about God. That's a lie. That's right. Why would someone know all things, all of a sudden think you so difficult, he got to try? Who are you? <laughs> Amen. You ain't that deep and that difficult. God got to try to figure you out. No. Give chapter and verse again. Psalms 139, we're starting at verse 1. Follow me. O Lord. O Lord. Thou hast searched me. Try to search me. Thou hast searched me. I'm too deep to be searched. Thou hast searched me. I'm undercover. Thou hast searched On me. On the down low. Thou hast searched me. Amen. Oh, Lord, thou hast. Thou hast searched me. Everybody in here now been searched by the Lord yeah. and is still being searched by the Lord. That's right. Is it anything in that book of his? Mm. You wouldn't want nobody to know. Oh, anything. Anything. Is there anything? Now, well, Pastor Jennings, how can I get any of those things erased? Mm. You got to repent for what you've done. Repent. That's right. If you don't repent for what you've done, that stuff going to still stay there. That's right. And that's why some folks are too stubborn and too hard here to repent. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, thou hast searched me <coughs> and known me. Wait a minute. Amen. Known me? Known me. Known me. Do you think God knew you before you were born? Lord. You, do you know that? Did you know that? I, I, for you that may feel as though you're too deep to think that uh, you have to be born for God to know you. You mm -hmm. better give me the first chapter of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 1 and we're at verse 5. I want to go right to the point. Before I formed thee in the God belly. God says before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. Well, that stopped that argument. <laughs> That's right. God said, before you were born. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God saw you commit that murder before you was born. That's true. God saw you cussing before you was born. Mm -hmm. God saw you lying and swearing and smoking and partying and gambling before you was born. Before. God saw you lying and saying, I'm confused. I don't know whether I'm a man or a woman. <laughs> That's right. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. God ain't never formed something between a man and a woman. No. He said he made male and female, mm -hmm. created he them. That's right. Is that right? That's right. He ain't made male, then stumbled. <laughs> That's right. Female. Stumbled. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Made male, then after that, he tried something else and a bad product came about. No way. <laughs> no, no. A bad product came off the assembly line. Amen. And then all of a sudden, he kept working until a female came out. Not that. Oh, no. Well, Pastor Jenny, what about those who say they don't know what they are? The devil got that lie in them. Yeah. You don't know what you are? Stand in front of a mirror, buck naked. You'll find out. <laughs> you either one or two things. That's it. A man or a woman. A man or a woman. Am I right, I said? That's right. You're one of the two. <laughs> just in case you get cloudy upstairs, just go into a room by yourself, get a mirror, and strip down. Strip down. If you, if you don't remember what you are, just say, oh, oh okay, all right. <laughs> huh? oh, okay. Then get dressed and just come on back out. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Eh? Amen. The devil got in the mind of these men. That's why a lot of women now don't want to get married. She don't know what she's getting. That's true. She don't know what she's getting. Men now want to get pregnant. They're having experiments in China. Really They're having experiments in China now 
getting men to volunteer for pregnancy tests. My Lord. That's the That's devil the out devil. of hell. Amen. That's the devil. My God, I have to preach everything. That's, That's right. why folks say I'm mean. You call me what you want. The Bible tells me to cry loud and spare not. Amen. Somebody got the door. In this case, God made choice among us yeah. and gave me a charge and sent me to do it. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. What did the Holy Ghost say? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before I formed thee in the everything that ever happened in your life, God saw it happen. Everything. Yeah, everything. Everything. Many of you got shot. Are you wondering why you're still living? It wasn't because cost you tough. No. Got stabbed, got shanked, almost bled out. Yeah. You wonder why you didn't die? God was still giving you time. That's right. Oh, deed. They found you somewhere, laying there with the needle in your arm, drooling. Mm. You know why you're not dead? Because God was looking at you. That's right. When we were sinners, yeah. didn't have a mind to walk with God, it was the mercy of God that was protecting you, watching over you all the time. That's right. That's right. That's right. You didn't even know it mm. when you was cussing and smoking and gang banging. Yeah. He put it in his word. He know them that are his. So he was watching over you, having mercy on you, giving you time. That's right. Just giving you time. Hallelujah. I came up in the hood. Oh, man, we used to love to mix it up. Yeah. We get out there. Oh, yeah, we mixed it up. Never smoked because I never was attracted to smoke. Never drank because to me, liquor stink. But when it comes to thumping and pugging, <laughs> I loved it. That's I would right. mix it up and be laughing. Mm. Never carried a gun, never carried a knife. You see, when I came up in the hood, the best man that used these, yeah. best man win. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Some of the old heads know what I'm talking about. They call you out, yo, come on, let's mix it up. Like, All right, come on. Toe to toe. Mm, 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 mm. Mix it up. Mix it up. Best man win. If you win, we shake, See? we go back playing ball. That's right. <laughs> go back playing ball. Today, if you win, boom. <laughs> you dead. <Yeah. clears throat> this love, America, has this deep attraction to violence and Satan. Yeah. The music industry, the choreography that they have on stage, satanic. Satanic emblems and with hoods and burning fire looking like evil and That's wickedness. Right. That's right. And our young people want to look just like it. Amen. What is happening to our young people? The churches believe that they have to mimic the world right. to get people. No, you do not. No. You, Jesus said this, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw I will. all men unto me. That's right. Amen. The truth of God is a witness. Did we sell tickets to get you here? No. Talk back to me. No. Did we put on a play? No. Did we put on a rally? No. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. We didn't do that. No. Did we beg you to come? No. Did we put on a performance? Did we get a celebrity as a spokesperson? Go ahead. No. That's right. 
That's right. We preach God's preach word. word. And God says, my sheep. Go to God. My sheep yeah. will hear yeah. my voice. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. And a stranger. Glory to God that will not follow. That's right. If you God's sheep, you will hear God's voice. That's right. God's sheep know God's voice. Amen. When they hear God's voice, it works on the heart. It pulls on the heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The world loves violence. They love bloodshed. They eat the bread of wickedness. All these young people coming to the truth of God. The truth. Amen. Black brothers, white brothers, Hispanic brothers, Asian brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I was in California, so many Hispanic brothers, black brothers, Asian brothers going down in the water. That's right. Asian brother and his wife came to me and after they got baptized. He shook my hands and said, most honorable Pastor Jones. <laughs> Amen. All God wants is your heart and your willingness to obey him. That's right. You young people. Hallelujah. You young people, I would never tell you like a lot of preachers tell you. The world ain't got nothing to offer. Oh, the world got a lot to offer you. Oh, yeah. It's just up to you to accept it or reject it. That's right. But if you hang out there in the streets, you might as well expect to end up with the results of the streets if you are fool enough to stay out there. That's right. That's right. So you want to be accepted by a gang. Hmm. And one of your initiations are uh, they coerce you to drive by and smoke somebody out. Yeah. Think of it. How can these cats claim they love you, man? And to be a part of them, you got to kill some woman's child. That's right. Don't you know the book says you'll reap what you what sow? You sow. Here you take a child life and you never repent it for it. You knock some girl up, get her pregnant, then that young boy follow your footsteps and someone take his life. You have reaped what you sowed. What you sowed. That's right. We're laboring to get you off the streets of America. Amen. Come back to God. Amen. They are building prisons. Depending on you to fill them. That's true. Did you know the prison system is being privatized? Do you understand what that even means? That means if I was a person who has some type of financial status or if I want to start a business, I may buy land or have land. I can invest in a prison and have a prison built on my land. They are paying, for some cases, two and three hundred dollars per inmate a day. Mm. Now imagine a prison holding five thousand. And privatizing the prison system means I can be a private owner. That's right. Or go in with some other friends of mine and we form our own business. So if I'm a private investor, I'm investing on the inmates and I'm investing on society to produce more inmates to make me rich. That's right. So do the government want crime to stop? No. Oh, no. Do Republicans want crime to stop? No. Do Democrats? No. Do the White House? No. Do the FBI? No. Do the CIA? Go ahead, man. No. Go ahead. Preach. 
because the American government is responsible for a lot of the drugs in this country anyway. That's right. Preach. Go ahead. So if the prison system is now privatized, they don't want to stop crime. Stopping crime meaning you're stopping income. Especially if I'm making two to three hundred dollars a day per inmate. Mm. Two, listen now, listen now what I said. I said, listen, mm. two to three hundred dollars a day per inmate. You know they want that prison filled. That's right. That's right. So we are encouraging our brothers and sisters to give your life over to God and you will detour the prison system. Amen. And to my brothers and sisters that are in prison, if the Lord blessed them to step out of prison to get away from the atmosphere that caused them to be there at the first place, the first place. See, when you want to walk with God, the objective of Satan is to pull you right back in what you fought to get out of. That's right. Not only that is to pull you in what you never was in. That's right. Read quick so I can knock off. Back in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12. Get this. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Human family, human family, God bless your stubborn heart. Yeah. I saw the dead, small and great. Stand before God. You're going to stand before God, Mr. Yeah. Miss. Yeah. Used to be a song I remember in the 70s. Mr. Big Stuff. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Mr. Big Stuff. <laughs> I want to ask you today, Mr. and Mrs. Big Stuff. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yeah. You can have all the money in the world. I, I wish I could open people's head up and scoop out the ignorance with the ice cream scooper. <laughs> just take the upper part of the cranium and get an ice cream scooper. Just scoop out the stupid parts. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I believe that people think they're going to get away from God. Right. You don't get away from him while you're living, and you don't get away from him by, while you're dead. Right. Anytime you can't escape someone, you can't even escape them. If you die, if you die. you're going to confront them. Oh, yeah. Hmm? You're going to confront God now. Oh, Come yeah. on. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And what? And the books were open. The books were open. And another book was open, and which is the book of life. What is it? And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books uh -huh. according to their works. Yes. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. I told you, you can jump over the water and jump over there into the water, drown yourself, yes, but sir. the sea going to vomit you up. That's right. One day you're going to be out in the water fishing in one of these bodies of waters here in Texas. Before you know it, the great God of heaven, when he appears, you're going to see countless of bodies. Yeah. Countless mm -hmm. coming up. Can you imagine that? Going on a cruise, your fake Christian cruise. I say faith because it ain't no holy, sanctified, church, God-fearing woman is going to be on some cruise boat in a bikini. <laughs> That's right. You know more Christian than I'm, than I'm related to Fred Astaire. Amen. We're through a bikini and being like Jesus got in common. <laughs> a God-fearing woman won't advertise all her body parts. That's right. A God-fearing man won't either. No. You out there in public like that? Amen. With no shame, <laughs> but this young, ignorant generation. <laughs> well, I feel like if you got it, then you should flaunt it. <laughs> you think like a fool. That's a fool. You think like a fool. That's right. If you got it, you flaunt it. Man, the way these young people think, they're mindless. <laughs> Come on, son. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Then what? And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Death and hell, mean, hell is not talking about the eternal hell here. It's talking about the grave. grave. Death and hell have give, have give up what? 
and death and death hell and delivered hell up the delivered dead which were the in dead them. That was in them. And they were judged. They were judged. Every man. Who? Every man. No, just black folk. Every man. Read that right now. Just them that got dreadlocks. And they were judged every man. No, just the Hebrew Israelites. Every man. No, just the Ku Klux Klan on every skinhead. Every man. Read that right. Read it right now. And, Read it right. And they were judged every man. Every man? Of every man. Every black man. Every man. I told you God don't care about your skin color. That's right. If you got so many dreadlocks to replace your shoelaces. Hmm. Huh? And yeah. they were judged. They were judged. Every man. Every man. According. Woman, I don't care if you're so yeah. beautiful when you walk the street, fire hydrants explode, <laughs> and the water form a ceiling over your head, and all grasshoppers make noise and music with their legs. Hello. And, 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 and crickets form a symphony as you walk the street, I said. Hello. But the Holy Ghost said. And they were judged every man according to their works. I want everybody to realize you're nothing but dirt. That's it. Hmm? That's right. I mean nothing but dirt, nothing dust. But dirt. That's all, y'all. But one scripture says your flesh is as grass mm -hmm. and as a flower that fadeth and wither away. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they were judged every man according to their works. Yes. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. What? This is the second death. Did you hear this? Amen. I don't want the second death. Second death. I want to be in the first resurrection yeah. so I can face my God in peace. Amen. You better repent now. Mm -hmm. 90 went down last night in the name of Jesus Christ and you that haven't obeyed. Amen. You that haven't obeyed, you better take advantage, Houston, you better take advantage of the truth of God work that started here. You better take advantage of it. Contact your family, your cousins, your enemies, the drug dealers. They get, when I, I, like I said last night, the, the, uh, uh, the bikers that was out there yesterday. Man, they was out there by the number too, brother. And uh, when I got out the SUV, some of them recognized who I was. And they came up with a talk, and one of the bikers said, man, if I knew that you was here, I would have been, I would have came to the service. Hmm. I said, well, go tell your biker buddies to come on, stop in. Come on, stop in now. You can pull on up with your Harley. Hmm. You come on, pull up with your Harley, and I'll race the engine of my Jesus. Amen. <laughs> huh? Glory to God. I'll race the engine of my Jesus, you know. Amen. I hear put your Harley in the dust. <laughs> That's right. Everybody in the world, it's time for you to get your life right with God. When God sent a preacher, when God sent one, I'm not talking about someone who you feel like they got a calling. No, I mean when God sent one, mm. God sent him for a period of time. And he got a job to do for that period that God sent him to do it. And then God take him off the scene. Mm. How long I'm here, I don't know. Glory to God, but while I am here, I'm going to do the work of him that sent me. That's right. Take advantage of it. Hallelujah. Take advantage of it and run for your life. That's right. We done gave the devil plenty of time. In fact, we done gave him too much time. Right. And the only reason why we're still breathing today is because God has given us time to make everything about us crooked straight. That's right. You've got to be an arrogant, self-righteous, hard-haired fool not to take advantage of it. Repent of your sins. Repent this means be sorry about the way you're living. It's amazing how people, well, I know you're telling the truth, but I'm not ready yet, Pastor. What else you want to do? Hmm. Well, Pastor Jennings, you, you know it's, it's hard. You didn't say that when you were the Baptist. <laughs> That's right. You know why? Because you was a Baptist and still clubbing at the same time. Yeah. That's why you was a happy Baptist. <laughs> huh? One of them happy Baptists. You, went, hey, you was at every Baptist project going on and baking Baptist sweet potato pies and making Baptist potato salad and selling Baptist chicken dinners. And, <laughs> amen. And here we come along. Live holy! No second wives, no, and your first wife is living. 
no second husbands and your first husbands living, no living together, not married, no, none of that. None of that. None of that. No homosexual, men don't switch and women don't stroll. That's right. Am I right, I say? Amen. Come along with the word of God and strip you down. down. And people don't want to be stripped like this. No. But do you know before anything new is built, you got to tear down the old land. That's right. You got to tear down the old house. Yeah. Now I want to close out quickly with the first chapter of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's see what God told the prophet to do. Amen. Amen. And, and this is what I'm here in Houston to do. I have to do what the prophet have done. You want to move quick? Amen. You want to see what he told him to tear down and build up and destroy. In the book All of, right. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and we're at verse 10. All right. See. See. I have this day. I want to show you how God make his preachers. See, I have this day. Set thee over the nation. And. And over the kingdom. To do it. To root out. Yeah. Anytime you want to kill a plant, get it by the roots. Yeah. Anything in us that's not like God, the word of God, want root to root it out. It out. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of us don't want some things rooted out of us because we love it. We're going to root up that whiskey and root up that beer and tear the bar down in your house. Yep. Run your second husband down the street and throw your second wife out the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Root out. Huh? Root out. You two men that got a mind to get married and having your conversation by, amen, behind folk back, telling each other how nice you look. Huh? <laughs> you gay, stay away. <laughs> Stay away from each other. Now, if you're a homosexual and you're here, you're welcome. You come on. Come on. Come on so we can preach that germ off of you. It's a parasite. That's right. Huh? That's it's right. It's a parasite. Yes, being a homosexual, that spirit is a parasite. It latched on to your flesh. Yeah. Think of it. <laughs> what do a man <clears throat> have to offer a man? Nothing. Mm. Huh? I mean, when a man, I, don't, I can't see a man looking at him. Listen, it's, listen. <laughs> I can call a spade a spade. It's wrong to look at a woman that's not your wife. That's true. But it's sad when you can't do wrong the right way. <laughs> Let me say it again. <laughs> Somebody said, Pastor Jennings, there's no such thing as doing wrong the right way. Yes, it is. Now. When you smoke a cigarette, you don't put the part that's lit in your mouth, do you? When you drink a bottle of whiskey, do you drink it with cap on or cap off? You got to take the cap off. When a man look at a woman, what he get out of looking at a woman, he have no right, no reason. It's unethical. It is not logical to feel the same way when he look at his own kind. His own kind. It's wrong to look at a woman and lust and she's not your wife. But if you're going to do wrong, <laughs> you should do wrong the right way. <laughs> there, there, there's even the right way to fornicate. That's right. And yet fornication is wrong. But a man, if he wise, he ain't gonna wanna fornicate with a man. With a man. He wanna fornicate with a woman. That's right. That's doing wrong the right way. Amen. That's going to hell the right way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Read it quick, son. See, I have this day set thee over the nation. Yeah, you thought, I, you thought I was going to let you off the hook, didn't you? <laughs> See, I have this day to set you over the nation. And over the kingdom. To do what? To root out. Root out. And to pull down. That's, that's, that's the job of the preacher. He got to root out, pull down. And to destroy. destroy and to throw, throw down. down. To build, build and to plant. You see, all that got to be done before you start to build and to plant. That's right. Now let's close out in Acts 2.38. I want to show everybody who haven't obeyed this that you got this to do. Acts chapter 2 <coughs> and at verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. If you want to be born again, if you want to be right, you want to get your sins washed away, you ain't never, 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 never been saved since you've been born. Mm. 
until you obey what he's about to read here. Then Peter I don't care what kind of sal fake salvation you got looking at Peter pop off. Amen. I don't care what fake salvation you got looking at Texas Joel Austin. That's right. I don't care what kind of fake salvation you got looking at T.G. Snakes. T.G. Yeah. Glory to God. I don't care. That's right. You're going to come on back to Bible. Amen. You're going to either do it like the Bible said or you're lost. That's right. The Bible says in Acts 2, 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, join the church. Repent. The hour of decision. Repent. Pray a sinner's prayer. Repent. Bow your head and raise your hands and accept Christ as your personal Savior. Repent. And many of us have done all that foolishness. To go to a priest and uh, let him Christian you and sprinkle water over your head. Repent. Come on back to Bible. That's Houston, right. Houston, America, Australia, Canada, South America, Belgium. Yeah. The world, world. you got to come back to Bible. That's right. Every preacher, I don't care if you call yourself an apostle, a bishop, an elder, evangelist, a rabbi, a priest, a monk, an imam, call yourself whatever you want. Whatever you you're going to have to come back to Bible or you're going to have to go to hell by God. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. Who? Every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Remission means removing. You want your sins washed away? That's how you get it removed. That's right. And, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy you Ghost. You ain't never had the Holy Ghost unless you speak in tongue at the spirit of the living God give utterance. Give utterance. I don't mean some false prophet came in the church and ran an artificial week revival and left richer than he did the week before. Yeah. And he come telling you, then when I count to three, everybody stand and speak. One, and everybody gets get set. Two. Three. How many? 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 You ain't got the Holy Ghost. You got the devil in you. That's right. You're filled with the devil out of hell. Amen. Any any time your Holy Ghost can be turned on and turned off like a microwave, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. No. Holy Ghost is a gift that come from God. That's right. The Bible says every good gift, every perfect gift, come from above, come down from the Father of Lights. Of whom there is no variables, no shadow of turning. Amen. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got it like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's right. It was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit, not as the bishop, as the Spirit, the not as the elders, as the Spirit, not as their pastor got to approve it or he got to hear it. Right. As the Spirit to give utterance. That's right. Repent. Re then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent, Houston. Amen. And be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You got this to do. For the remission if you don't sins. want to go to hell, now burn. That's right. Burn. You got this to do. But if you want to burn and you think you're so tough and you, you know, you're too tough to obey this, all right, well, you go ahead. Go ahead. You the boss. Mm -hmm. You want to change a man, throw gasoline on him and put a match on him. That's right. I don't, I don't care if his voice is heavier than mine. You won't find a man on fire burning cool. <laughs> huh? He's on fire burning, he won't be sitting there. Oh, that hurt, man. <laughs> that hurt, you know, when, when somebody gonna put the flame out, please, you know? Somebody gonna put it out? No. No, no. <laughs> Brother, that flames, <laughs> those flames hit his backside. If he got a baritone voice, his voice gonna shoot up like a soprano. Yes, it will. Imagine burning in hell. What is hell? Hell is that anger, that anger, that God has and hell is made to get even with all humanity That's right. because of the disobedience. You never burn up. You got to fall as long as God remain God yeah. and there's no end to him. There's no light in hell. It's called outer darkness. Fire will wrap around your skin and your skin will never be consumed. Yeah. And the fire of hell is not like the fire of earth. The fire of earth, man can put it out, and man can control it. That's right. The fire of hell, God said, they have kindled a fire in my anger mm. and shall burn to the lowest hell. You will never hit a bottom. Mm. Imagine burning for a million years, and you just got started. Hello. Your flesh is going to have all the same feelings it have now. Mm. 
you're going to be hungry and starving. Yeah. And everything you ever done that caused you to go to hell, you're going to remember. That's right. You're going to be repenting, and God is going to turn a deaf ear. Oh, yeah. God won't hear you. Mm. God won't respect your repentance, and God won't deliver you out of hell. That's right. He's doing right now to keep you out of hell Amen. and to keep you out. He sent holiness to you. That's right. That's what he's doing to keep you out. That's right. He sent holiness to the Amen. world. Amen. Repent. Repent and be baptized. Stubborn man, stubborn woman. Hallelujah. God ain't never told you to be Baptist and Methodist and Presbyterian no. and Pentecostal and Catholic and non-denominational. God didn't tell you to be that garbage. No, no. Well, Pastor Jim, my mama is that. That's your mama business. God ain't. That's right. God was here before your mama. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jim, my, 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 my granddaddy had the first African Baptist church in Houston. <laughs> Listen, I don't care if your grandfather grew the first uh, uh, orange tree in Houston. When the Lord come, oh, you man. and your grandpappy is going to stand before God. That's right. You better hear this now. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to obey God and repent of their sins yeah. and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and escape the lake of fire because it's coming. If you want to get right today, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on. Come on, Houston. Stand on your feet. Glory to God. All of you that are standing, all of you that are standing, go on out that door there. All of you that are standing, go on out there, straight out. Go straight out. You got to be baptized to be saved. Everybody. Emmanuel. And Marcus, go this, go down this way, brother. You got to be baptized to be saved. Hallelujah. If you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you've never been saved in your life. My God, I tell you, Houston, Houston, the Lord is truly doing a job right here. Hallelujah. Everybody that have not repented. Repent. Everybody that was not baptized Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not saved. That's right. Well, Pastor Jen, I was baptized in a Baptist church. It ain't a Baptist church that ever baptized one person right in the world. That's right. All the Baptists been baptized wrong. Yep. Even if your daddy was the pastor, he been baptized wrong. Your mama was baptized wrong. You got to do it like the Bible says. That's right. The Bible says repent. Repent the Bible ain't says pray a sinner's prayer. The Bible never said join the church. The Bible didn't say bow your head and raise your hand. That's right. The Bible didn't say none of that. None of that. The Bible tell us whatsoever we do. In word. In word. Or deed. Or deed. Do all. How much? Do all. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you're not baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. you're still a sinner. That's right. Come on and obey God, Houston. When I first came here in October of 2018, 156 went down in water. Amen. Now, we, we, I, I know we don't went way over 100 again. Amen. This is truly the Lord's doing. Now, remember, this is our new temporary location services every Sunday. Every Sunday after this Sunday, every Sunday. Come on and walk with the word of God. <laughs> Who can give me the correct time, brother? 155. All right. Our next service begins at 5 o'clock. Come on back. Hang out with me one more evening. Come on back. You ain't got nothing to do. Whatever game is on, let them play it. <laughs> you come on back and get this word. This is your introduction to God. It's time for us to start our journey to walk with the Lord. May God keep you. May God preserve you. Come on back. Let us all stand. Brother Williams, to close us out with prayer. Come on back. Prayer begin at 5 o'clock. All right. Father God, we do come to once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you and praise you once again.
for the words of the Lord that was taught in our hearing. Father God, we want to thank you for the man of God and for the gospel that you put in his mouth. We thank you, Father God, for the souls that desire to go down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue, Father God, to stir up the people. My God, that they may hear the words of the gospel preached and taught as it was in the days of the apostles. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you've been to us and for all that you've done for us thus far. We do pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.